I'm Catfish Dave. I was raised in Florida fishing for catfish and I had no idea that one day I would be responsible for killing the world record catfish. I was having a conversation on social media and some guy from the Cumberland River said you should be thankful you fished the Tennessee River because the Cumberland River is terrible. Well he's saying that from over on the Cumberland River because he ain't been to my section of the Tennessee River. As it all started out, the Cumberland River was the first river system in Tennessee to get destroyed. I would go to Walmart, I think, four times a year, and an in fisherman would put out a magazine called Catfish Magazine. Now that's the only information we had as catfishermen back then, you know, talking about big catfish, how to catch big catfish, where big catfish were swimming, all this kind of stuff. One of the guys that was in that M. Fisherman magazine was a guy named Jim Moyer from Clarksville, Tennessee. He was a guide over there for catfish, and he done quite a few articles in the M. Fisherman magazine about catching big catfish. Well, I wasn't the only one reading this M. Fisherman magazine. People from all over the country was reading In Fisherman Magazine, and they started flocking from all over the country to fish the Cumberland River. It started getting fished commercially. It was fished by everybody from states around. Eventually, a state record catfish, which was also a world record catfish at the time, was caught in the Cumberland River around Clarksville, Tennessee of 112 pounds. This made Tennessee an even more popular tourist destination for seeking out big catfish. Later on, In Fisherman put out a magazine talking about Fort Loudoun, which is the lake I fish or started fishing or live closest to, and it said that Fort Loudoun was one of the top 10 lakes in the United States to catch a world record catfish. This was back in the 1990s. I was fishing for catfish at this time. Uh, I just got into fishing for big catfish. They didn't have all the fancy gear, catfish rods out there from different makers. Uh, I had to drive all the way to Atlanta and went to a Bass Pro Shops down there because they had a saltwater section and that's where I bought a lot of my tackle. Back then, all these tackle shops around here, Walmart, bait stores, all you could get was bass and crappie stuff. Uh, you know, people back then basically threw livers and worms for catfish. Right there is one of the old rods I had from the 90s, St. Croix Classic Cat. Uh, this was the first high-end catfish rod. This was an American-made, American blank catfish rod. And you can't find one of those anymore. This rod is... 20 something years old, caught many fish. The cork's still in pretty good shape. You won't find these anymore. Uh, another rod that came out at the time to be in competition with this rod was the Berkeley E Cat. Not the new China version. Uh, they had a really nice rod back then from Berkeley E Cat that got discontinued. This rod here was discontinued. Uh, there wasn't that many people in the catfish world that were going to spend that kind of money to catch catfish. So they phased that rod out. I came to Tennessee for the very first time 1982 World's Fair. We stayed at a campground on the Little Pigeon River. Later on, I was older. Uh, I think I was living in Atlanta, Georgia area, Gwinnett County area. Uh, my parents had moved out of Florida and had come to Tennessee uh, and had got into the Subway sandwich shop business. They bought up five or six sandwich shops in the Sevier County, Tennessee area. And uh, they had been up here several years. One day I was talking to my mom on the phone. She says, you ought to come up here and help us out with these restaurants for a little while and get them going. I'm thinking, what in the world's in Tennessee? I don't know if I'd want to live there or not, you know. So I come on up here and uh, worked in them shops for a little bit. Uh, 
My ex-brother-in-law at the time, he was from Florida. He was a big time fisherman. And when we would get off in the evenings, we'd go buy us some chicken livers or whatever from the store. And we would go down there by that campground I stayed at in 1982 at the World's Fair and fish for catfish. I caught my first blue catfish right here, man. There was the campground right over there. I come out here in the summer through a live bluegill out there. This is the Pigeon River, Little Pigeon. Connects to the French Broad. Goes down to the uh, Tennessee River. But uh, caught my first ever blue cat right here. Back around 1995, I believe. We used to pull a truck down this thing right here. Uh, I guess the water treatment people put something, you can't do it no more. We used to back a four-wheel drive down here and sit in the tailgate and catfish. Everything changes. About a mile away from here, down the French Broad River, there was a 60-pound blue cat caught. That stood as the state record for a long time, right out of the French Broad River. This was, again, uh, I believe that fish was caught in the 80s. But either way, there were so many blue cat in Fort Loudon. They would come all the way up the French Broad, and even in this river right here to spawn. Come up and try this far up the French Broad now. Good luck on finding a blue catfish. Some channel cats. There's always a few flatheads that can hide out, but uh, this place has been fished to death right here. I fished up at uh, Douglas Dam some, and uh, I found out I could go up there and catch shad in a cast net, catch skipjack herring on a rod and reel. And sometimes I would fish at that dam. I've caught in several good flatheads out of that dam, but I quickly learned I could drive about 20 minutes down the road into downtown Knoxville and hook up on a regular basis with nice sized blue catfish just fishing in the downtown area. I caught fish all the time. Most of the time I'd let them go. There was about a 40 pound blue cat that I kept catching over and over again. I think I had caught it like three times and I was fishing for a big fish. And uh, I finally got tired of that fish. And I actually pulled that fish out of there. I drove it to Douglas Dam. And there were some guys out there fishing the wall. And I walked out to two old men out there that were catfishing. I said, y'all want this big catfish? They said, how big is it? I said, probably about 40 pounds. It's like, yeah, I'll take that fish, you know? So we went back to my truck. We got that fish. He was happy. He grabbed his rod and reels, said he had some old woman up the road been wanting some fish, he was going to take it to her house. Back then, catch and release, you know, uh, I released him just because uh, I had no desire to keep him. There was no rhyme or reason behind it at the time. Caught a lot of good fish in downtown Knoxville. Several times, I hooked some monsters down there. My reputation grew as a cat fisherman. Uh, I eventually got the name by the locals as uh, Catfish Dave. This was long before social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I just done it because I liked it. You know, I was after them big fish. I'd hooked some big fish that had got away from me. And I was going to keep going until I got one of them big fish. Catching 30 pound catfish back in those days. Uh, you could do it any day of the week at any bank spot you could find on Fort Loudon Reservoir. You might have to wait a while, certain times of year. You might sit out there two or three hours with a skipjack soaking. But before long, you heard that uh, clicker screaming off and uh, your heart got to pumping. You went and set the hook on a good fish. Several times, uh, I'd have people offer me money. I'd be standing off them docks like over at Second Creek. I'd hook a 25, 30 pound fish and somebody come running over there offering me $20 for the fish, you know, and I'm thinking, well, you know, all the times I drive down here and gas I spend and stuff. So there's been a couple of times uh, I actually handed that fish over for a $20 bill, you know. They'd take the fish, they'd be over there posing with it like they caught it, and that was that, you know. Didn't think a thing about it. Fish like that back then were a dime a dozen. Later on, I discovered uh, 
other parts of the river. I had some guys I was talking to off the docks. They were telling me about some of the other parks farther down and uh, how deep some of the water was down there and stuff. So I started venturing down there. Had really good trips. Um, I caught fish every time I went. 15, 20 fish days off the bank were pretty common if you fish three or four hours. Yeah, it's very common. After a while, uh, I got me a Facebook and a real cell phone where I could take pictures. and I started posting fish on there. People started taking notice, you know. After a while, I got a reputation for being consistent at catching big catfish, and all this was out of Fort Loudon Reservoir. I'd have guys message me all the time, where to fish, where to fish. Guys started coming from out of state. I mean, it was, uh, there's no telling how many people came every weekend from out of state and fished Fort Loudon Reservoir. I had caught a lot of good fish, uh, I had discovered a spot down river in the fall I could go to. And any night of the week, getting around the end of September through October and November, I could go to that spot. I could catch 40 pound fish every night I went. Uh, sometimes multiple 40s up to 50. My biggest in that area, and I only fished it a couple years before people discovered it, but I ended up landing a 68 pound blue cap 52 inches long off that spot eventually people discovered that spot and uh i could no longer fish it my biggest fish came in 2015 when that fish was first caught we waited on a deer scale spring scale at 106 pounds uh, we took measurements of the fish all that was done on someone else's video camera it was 53 inch long that had a 40 inch girth and if you do the mathematical weight on that fish uh, that comes out to exactly 106 pounds. TWRA came out to weigh the fish I said we need to weigh a fish over 100 pounds they brought a scale that maxed at 100 pounds it was just a little bitty digital scale about this wide and they laid that scale on the ground and they said put the fish on that I said you got to be kidding me. I said, 90% of the fish is going to be laying on the ground. They had no idea how to weigh that fish. Uh, finally, I suggested we put the fish in some kind of tub or container and put it on there. So they found something in the back of their vehicle and started taking clothes and stuff out of it, extra uniforms and stuff. And we got the fish in that, but it was still on unlevel ground. And they'd weigh the fish at like 90 something. And I'd be carrying it back to the water to release it. I kept this thing alive all night long. And they'd say, bring it back, bring it back. I said, why? Because the scale's not weighing right. I said, I already told you that scale's not going to weigh right. Because we had tried to use a scale like that. And they had it sitting on unlevel ground. I said, it's not going to weigh right unless you can put that thing somewhere it's level. Either way, uh, it was a big fish. No matter how you look at it, it was a big fish. Word got out. And uh, once people knew I had caught that fish, there was literally not a spot you could get off the bank anywhere in that entire section of the river. All them piers, the bridges, it was wall to wall, elbow to elbow. Stayed that way for several years. There was another boy that had come along uh, a few years later and he had caught in that fish again. And that's the last time we'd ever seen that fish. I was actually the second guy to catch it. There were some guys before me a couple of years earlier. They had waited at a 104 and uh, released that fish. I think the third time it got caught, it was caught in the month of June. And I believe it was out of the water just a little too long probably for pictures and the whole nine yards. Uh, not being prepared to hook something like that or lance. Either way, that was the last true giant that ever got caught out of Fort Loudon Reservoir. Catfish tournaments on Fort Loudon Reservoir, they used to constantly bring in 40, 50, 60 pound fish. There's been some 80 pound uh, fish brought in at those Poland Creek tournaments, which average anywhere from 30, 40, 50, 60 boats per tournament. Uh, I think Chris Vitato had the record for a while 
Uh, I think his was 89. Matter of fact, I believe he still got the record on the biggest fish in that tournament, which was 89 pounds. And uh, the last big fish in that tournament was by A.J. Johnson. I believe that fish was 82 pounds. Today, Fort Loudon catfish tournaments, their average weigh-ins are 20-something pounds. The big fish are usually in the 20-pound range, 26, 28 pounds. This is week after week after week. Once in a blue moon, you'll see a decent fish come in on a Fort Loudon catfish tournament. When I say decent, I'm talking about up to 60, which is only about as half as they get. And that only happens a couple times a year. If you look at statistics across the country, that ain't nothing. There's tournaments down in Alabama, Mississippi River, other places. They're weighing in two fish over 90 uh, off one boat. A uh, couple hundred pounders come in in the same tournament. Total weights of 20 something pounds out of 50 boats. That is, uh, that's some pretty sad numbers. And that's where Fort Loudon's at right now. How did it get that way? In Fisherman Magazine started it out for years and years and years and years. People were traveling down here because it was the top 10 destination in the world to catch a world record catfish. I didn't totally put all the pressure on that lake. That lake had been getting pressured for years, years and years and years. What I done with Facebook, YouTube, and not just me, another local YouTuber, we, we kind of just added a couple more nails to the coffin. I had people coming up to me all over the banks, you know, they had never fished before in their life. They had no idea these fish were here, and so they started catfishing because of me. We're talking a city the size of Knoxville, which is quite a few people. In 2019, the population of Knox County was 470,313. 470,000 people live in Knox County alone. Fort Loudon's getting fished by people from my county, people all the way from the forest parts of Tennessee, southern Virginia on a regular basis. Uh, all the towns around Maribel coming from middle Tennessee, uh, Athens area. They were driving up from everywhere to Fort Loudon Reservoir. Not just the 470,000, but probably that times 10. And then you add all the out-of-staters and uh, Fort Loudon has had a lot of pressure put on it. What people don't understand is, if you kill a 100 pound fish, that fish is gone. There's only a select number in each one of these reservoirs, and once you kill a fish that size, it can take 20 to 30 years to replace that fish. I always let my fish go. What I've seen, what I've seen in a lot of my YouTube comments, uh, most people don't let fish go. And that's how we've gotten where we're at today. 1998 was when that state record was caught in the Cumberland River. 1998. How many years ago was that? 24 years ago was the last time we seen a state record come out of Tennessee waters. State records have been popping up all over the country since then, to the point of almost every year. Many of the state records being caught are way bigger than the Tennessee state record. Why? Because for years and years and years, everybody was coming down here to catch big fish. They had no idea they even had fish in their own waters. They were just going by what they heard. And they traveled here for years and years and caught these fish. Meanwhile, their home waters were growing fish. I had a guy I talked to, he actually bought a houseboat and started fishing here because of my videos. Drove all the way over here from the Carolinas and I'd met him once and I'd met him again probably about a year later. And I had a conversation with that guy. I said, man, I said, I've been where you live. I said, where you live is better fishing than this is right here. And uh, he said, you know what? He said, you're right. He says, I didn't know that at first, but once I got into catfishing and really learned how to catch them, I'm catching way better fish 
back home in the Carolinas than I am here in Knoxville. I said, there you go. That guy recently uh, won a tournament on uh, Lake Wiley uh, over in the Carolinas, North Carolina, South Carolina. I think it's real close to the border. And he caught a 70-pound fish in that tournament. They got a couple good flatheads the same day in that tournament. Uh, you don't see winning weights like that in Fort Loudon. He had fished that lake a couple times in his life and got a 70-pound fish. The second time I ever went to Nickajack, I got an 82-pound catfish. Most of the guys that fish these local tournaments, their biggest fish, even though they fish Fort Loudon five days a week and have been for 20-something years, the biggest fish they ever caught was because they've been somewhere else like Alabama three, four, five times in their life. Their personal best fish are from out of state. I think Ricky Dean, first time he ever went to Nickajack, I think he got a 70-something pounder. Travis Dyer, he got below Watts Bar Dam, uh, got a 90-something pounder. Been fishing Fort Loudon for as long as I have. Everybody's biggest fish comes from places they hardly ever fish because those waters have not had the pressure. I'd done a series of videos uh, and I had went down to Alabama and I could not put the boat in the water and not get at least a 40, 50 pounders. Uh, biggest flathead I ever caught came the first time I ever fished Gunnersville and I had fished these waters for 30 something years. See, these waters have been getting hammered since back in the 90s when that In Fisherman magazine came out. When you take 50, 60, 70, 80 pound fish out of the water, it takes years for those fish to grow back. They're not replaced next year, two years later, three years later, four years later. Every reservoir section of river has a certain number of fish. And when you deplete those big fish, that's it for many years. Most of those trips I done in Alabama, I spent very little time fishing. Uh, at the longest, I was out there two or three hours. You can spend a month, you can spend a year on Fort Loudon, or even longer to catch a fish like that. Down there, it took me two hours per trip. Fort Loudon used to be like that. There were so many giants in Fort Loudon, it was unreal. I boated 72 catfish by myself uh, back in the 1990s in an old beat up aluminum boat. Had a friend come up from Florida, took him out there, and after two hours he said, man, let's go. I says, I'm tired of reeling these things in. This was in downtown Knoxville. 30, 40, 50 pound fish were common catches at all these public parks. If you go to these parks today and you catch a fish over 15 pounds, you've had a good day. After about 2016 was the biggest decline, and that's when I noticed a sharp drop in the numbers of fish, the size of fish uh, coming in that I was catching, other people was catching, the numbers of these tournaments. All these statistics don't lie. This isn't just a bad spell. This isn't, isn't just a bad month. This has been taking place over years and now is a regular thing. At these tournaments, an average big fish is 20 something pounds and we're talking about fish that have the potential to grow to 150 pounds. Once Knoxville started getting bad, all these people that I was talking about from all these counties around, from Virginia, just places everywhere, uh, we all started going to Watts Bar and uh, you could catch fish again. The problem with that is, as it is now, seeing what I was seeing back in Fort Loudon back in 2016. It's now getting into Watts Bar that a 50 pound fish is a big fish for the year. You used to get just high numbers of fish anywhere you went and now you have to really work that river to find where the fish are at. You're seeing lots and lots of dead water now in Watts Bar. Uh, basically the same cycle that I've seen Fort Loudon go through, I'm now seeing in Watts Bar. And it's moving south. It's, 
moving into Chickamauga. Uh, it is moving into Nickajack. Nickajack's getting a lot of pressure because me and everybody else, when we get tired of this, we're all running down there now and we're putting the pressure on those fish. Many of us guys are letting these fish go. But as these pictures are getting posted, as videos are getting made, people are coming in from everywhere that are not letting these fish go. And uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but eventually there won't be nothing left in Tennessee uh, to give you that excitement of catching a monster catfish. It's just a matter of time. This is a trip uh, I done the other night. I had seen some of the... Uh, local Fort Loudon catfish tournament stats and I said I'm gonna go out there just to see what these boys go through because I pretty much quit fishing it but I went out there again you know just to remind myself of what it is and why I don't want to fish it and I caught some fish in this video but I done some time on the water to get them
I've been out here about six hours for this fish. Alright y'all, I couldn't talk earlier because the wind was so bad and I almost don't feel like talking because I got it like a sore throat going on. I don't know if it's allergies or a bug going around in the air, who knows. Uh, I'm on Fort Lousy and basically I just decided it, it was too rough to drag baits. Uh, the waves are just going to knock your planer boards off your line. To be honest with you, Water temps, 73 degrees here. So, uh, your bigger blue cats are busy. I might throw a cast net, get some fresh bait, and then get right back here to this spot before the sun goes down. We got some gizzards that time. Yes, sir. Well, I see a dag blasted bug on my camera. What's going on here? Gosh dang spider. Ain't gonna have none of that. Go ahead and get this net ready. I assume I'm gonna catch another fish. You think I would, last part of April. Yeah. Something on the shed. Yes, sir. Something on the fresh shed. That's why we wanted fresh. It's not really rolling. Could be a smaller flathead. What do we got here? What do we got? No, it's it's an old blue kit. Old pesky blue kit. Knock my shad off the hook. Old pesky old dinky blue cat. Dag blasted geese out there making all kind of racket. I'll tell you what, I got some mosquitoes landing on me. So I'm gonna put this coat on. It's that time of year for the bugs to come out. Another old dinky blue kit. Biting off more than he can chew. I seen that old shad acting up a little bit like something was after it. And then I seen this rod 
bounce and then the line just went slack. Another dinky old blue cat. Got mud up all on the side there. Tell you what, that's a prize fish in Fort Loudon right there. We ain't in Alabama. We may have just a little bit bigger dink here. This is on that live shed. Yeah. That's what happens to your live shed. The wind's starting to pick back up. Oh yeah. Just a little bigger dink than the other ones, maybe. Well, there went my last live shed. I only kept a few of them alive. The guard tore most of them up. It's just a typical day on uh, Fort Lousy. We ain't in Alabama. All right, y'all, it's that weird time of year. The big blues, they're doing what they do, I'd say. And you're either going to get a flathead, a dinky blue, or if I was fishing a little farther upriver, I'd have a good shot. It's some of those dag blasted fish with the stripes on them. Either way, it's been a day, four fish total. The best one was that flathead. Around here, that's a tournament winner. Ten hours I was out there for those four fish. Uh, a lot of that had to do with the time of year. You're not seeing that many big blue cat right now. They're busy. But either way, uh, the videos I made in the Carolinas, I was on the water for two hours. Videos I made in uh, Alabama, I was on the wa water. Each one of those videos an average of two to three hours. There's a huge difference. If I had done that in just one time to an out-of-state water, that could have been luck of the draw. But every waters I have been to, I have done better than my home waters. Why? Because we started getting advertised back in the 90s. Fishing pressure is real, people. It's very real. You see me chunk all those fish back for a reason. Guys say, why don't you eat the fish? Why don't you eat the fish? Uh, we like fishing. You know, if I was to kill everything I've caught in my videos, I'd hate to see what Fort Loudon and Watts Bar look like. And you start accumulating that, a person after person after person doing the same thing. Those waters ain't that big, man. They ain't that big. Uh, they almost wiped bluefin tuna out of the ocean. Uh, Goliath grouper were almost wiped out. Had to get laws put on them. They're coming back now. But the big giants, they're nothing like they used to be back in the 50s and 60s. Many saltwater fish have strict regulations on them. Because even guys with rod and reels can have a hard impact on something as big as the ocean. States got together and uh, figured that out and put laws on it. The catfish has not been taken into consideration yet. 
Uh, and really, the people that make these laws are so behind the times on how popular fishing for these big catfish has become. The tremendous pressure from uh, sport fishermen, commercial fishermen, uh, pay lakes, these trophy lakes that come down and net our fish out to take them back up there and they don't live. So they end up dying. They have to come back and net more fish that takes 10, 15, 20 years to replace. They're hauling out of here every week. And eventually, this is what we have. We had a gem here at one time. A uh, gem enough for In Fisherman Magazine to call us out. In 1976, a 130 pound blue cat came out of Fort Loudon. I know of multiple triple digit fish that came out of Fort Loudon. You don't see that no more. You're not going to see that again for a long time.